Hello, everyone. We are back live uh, in the next ch chapter, the Virtual WordPress and Artificial Intelligence Conference. And I am here with Carolyn Shelby from Yoast. Very, very good to uh, meet you and looking forward to your talk. There was some very impatient people in the first session that said like, I came to this conference to learn how to use SEO with AI. So like, let's hear <laughs> how do we do that. Um, right. Take it away, Carolyn. <laughs> Okay, so I am Carolyn Shelby, and I'm going to be talking about the new frontier for SEO. Um, real quick, because I know we're behind on time, I go by Seashell, if you're looking for me on the interwebs. I'm the principal SEO at Yoast. I've been the principal SEO at Yoast for a hot minute, so about a month and a half, I think, at this point. Prior to that, though, I'm not going to give you my whole resume. I'm qualified to talk on this because I started in the industry in 1994. I co-founded an internet service provider. We started doing web hosting. I started build, building websites, got into SEO when SEO became a thing, and I've been doing it ever since. So let us, real quick, I'm very accustomed to being able to talk to my audiences and hear them laugh at my jokes. So if I pause and chuckle, it's because I told a joke, and I expect that you're laughing about it. If you're not laughing about it, please don't tell me. I'm good. Let me pretend. Thank you. All right, so the first thing I want to address is this overwhelming fear that everyone has that AI is going to steal all of, all of our jobs. The robots are coming, the overlords, they're going to take all our jobs and we're all going to be jobless. That's not going to happen. AI is going to be a tool. It's not a people replacement. It appears to be taking over everything, but I promise your jobs are not going to disappear. For developers and programmers, it kind of feels like the robots can do everything you can do, but you need to remember that to get the results you want out of the AI, there's a need for a competent human being to conceptualize and articulate the desired output. And even then, the AI isn't always going to get it right on the first or second or third or even fourth try. It takes human intervention for refinement and verification. So please, no panic there. For the content producers, the great news is your jobs are even safer. Just like with the developers and the programmers, the content requires humans to conceptualize and articulate the desired output. And this is why prompt writers' jobs exist. Not everyone is capable of writing good search terms. As SEOs, we know that. The whole reason our jobs exist is because not everybody is good at working Google. I'm better at it than some other people. I'm better at it than my mother. Don't tell my mother I said that. But I know how to craft a query and get the desired output. And AI is similar. You need to know how to craft a good prompt to get the desired output. But even with an excellent prompt, AI still has limitations that make it not as good as human output. So let's assume for a second your AI had the most current data set available. It's still not always going to get its facts correctly because it frequently misunderstands the context of a request. You know. I asked it to write a, um, uh, was a mission statement or an objective on a resume for me because I'm very bad about writing about myself. And I told it the things that I'm good at, but one of the things I mentioned was networking. And it didn't know the difference between networking as in meeting people and connecting people and networking like fixing routers. And I meant networking like fixing routers. Um, so that was one thing that it wasn't good at. Another thing that's worse than understanding is irony and sarcasm, um, puns, you know, it can, it can write limericks, it can write um, sonnets, it can do things in certain patterns, but it's just repeating patterns. It doesn't necessarily understand the nuance of the jokes. Like it does not get jokes. Um, let's see. Oh, sorry. It's, uh, I'm sorry, I'm missing things. The point is, you know, your jobs are safe. The, the computer is going to do things that, you know, they're just, it's not, it doesn't know what humans know. It'll make easy mistakes because it's only regurgitating things that it's already learned and it's guessing at the most common best match for the next word in a sentence based on the previous words that it's already written. 
it's going to make silly mistakes like um let's say that you ask it to write a story, a sports story. Um, and it talks about people, people from coast to coast doing X, Y, or Z. But this story happens to be something that you're running in England. In England, people don't say coast to coast. They say up and down the country. And you're like, well, why would that be different? It's different because in America, we are a longer, a wider than we are tall country and people Think about things. What's the greatest distance? The greatest distance is from left to right, not from top to bottom. So when we talk about something being big, we describe it as being coast to coast. In England, they're taller than they are wide. So the greatest distance is top to bottom. You go up and down. It's, a, it's that kind of awareness that the computer is just not capable of possessing right now. Could that change? Absolutely. But for right now, I promise you, your jobs are safe. AI integration in your workflow, however, is a tool that you're going to be able to use to be better and more efficient at your job. It's not something that's going to deprive you of your job because humans almost always produce better content than the machines can. Humans can innovate and add value to the overall pool of information. The machines are just rephrasing and repurposing the data they, they already have. Technically, I suppose there are businesses um, where AI can be used as a replacement. Is it widely recommended? Absolutely not. So who do I see as being potentially put out of business by AI? Maybe content mills. Content mills tend to churn out kind of garbage content. Like, I'm sorry if you're a content mill person, but the quality of the content, let's be honest, is not awesome. The quality of the content uh, frequently includes those mistakes that I mentioned earlier, where you're writing for an American off uh, an American audience and you're using English, British English idioms like uh, uh, the man himself. Americans don't say that on a regular basis. Uh, up and down the country, Americans don't say that. There's things that there's things that content mills mistakes they will make that are very similar to what the AIs make but the AIs can be trained out of it. <laughs> and I don't know that the content mills have any interest in, in training themselves out of it. So those kinds of businesses, yeah, maybe you should sweat, but I have other reasons for, for potentially recommending you consider a different career path anyway. Oh, that was funny. I'm going to assume you were laughing. The, the other thing that the computers are still doing that is worth noting is, you know, they've got these things called hallucinations. I don't think they're really hallucinations. It's more like guessing. This is when it knows that the next phrase or item in a sequence ought to be a fact or a name or something, but it doesn't have it in its data set to actually use something real. It will just go, oh, well, here's a fine example. I asked it to write something about me. It didn't know the answer, but it knew my first name was Carolyn. So because it didn't know my last name or there was no evidence that my last name was associated with the fact, it found a different Carolyn and used her last name when it shouldn't have. That would count as a hallucination. And I don't think it's really, it's not what we traditionally think of as a hallucination. The point is the computers don't always know the answer. And when they don't know the answer, they guess and they put in what is expected this is why human intervention is required to go in and fix those things. They also have this thing called behavior drift, which is where as they're learning, the prompts that you use today to great success might stop working as well or at all as the AI grows and develops because it's, it learns from what you feed it, but it also learns from its data sets. And just the behavior as it's learning kind of changes and it might not always change for the better. So this human oversight is going to constantly be required and be necessary just for quality control if for nothing else. All right, so enough about that. Let's talk about what AI is, is going to be useful for because it is beneficial, it can be beneficial. We're going to use it as a tool, especially in SEO, especially with our, our WordPress workflows. So put that to bed. We're going to go on and talk about how AI as a tool 
makes SEO better. The first thing we're going to talk about is productivity improvements because we all want to be more productive. This part is near and dear to my heart. I don't know if you're aware of this, but according to an article in the Journal of Global Health from 2021, about 7% of adults worldwide, which is, you know, 366 million people, have symptomatic ADHD. And this includes individuals that are diagnosed with ADHD regardless of onset. So there's a lot of us adults that were diagnosed with ADHD as adults, but we had it as children. ADHD onset in adults is very rare. So usually it's a missed diagnosis. Carolyn, why are you telling us this? I'm telling you this because the majority of people with ADHD have some form of executive function impairment. Um, and people with executive dysfunction can also not have ADHD, but we know that like 90% of the people with ADHD do have executive dysfunction, which means there's like 360 million of us, not including all the other people that have executive function challenges. An article from the National Cancer Institute on neurodiversity said that like almost 20% of the overall population is neurodiverse. So in addition to people with ADHD, like people with dyslexia, dyspraxia, autism, among others, there's a high occurrence of executive function challenges. What are executive function challenges? Executive function challenges are things like, I can't, okay, I'm gonna speak for me personally. Um, when I was a kid, I was labeled an underachiever and my parents thought I was lazy. So I have a very hard time writing documents. I have a hard time writing essays. I would have to, if you gave me 24 hours to do a writing assignment, I would wait until hour 23, staring at a white sheet of paper, paralyzed and unable to get started. And I would build up the adrenaline and the fear and the guilt until I could force myself to start. And with like an hour to go, I would crank out, granted it was a masterpiece, but the pain I would go through to get that done was ridiculous. It was stressful, it was exhausting, it frustrated my teachers, it frustrated my parents. It was painful for everyone involved. Having something already written, like using the AI in my workflow to give me an outline or get me started would save me 23 hours of pain. That's the kind of accommodation, according to you know, these statistics that like 360 million adults need in, in the world. That's what AI can do. So for, for content producers and SEO, people who do SEO, people who do SEO with their work, AI is going to make your life much easier because a lot of us have some form of neurodiversity. A lot of us need that little bit of extra help just coming up with ideas. And working this into our workflow is going to overcome and mitigate these executive function challenges. Um, it helps shorten the time required to, to complete complex tasks like writing new pieces of content. It's going to perform menial tasks at scale and exponentially faster than humans can do it. Like, you know, those tasks that are generally reserved for interns because you don't like them. I mean, because they're young. <laughs> I'm just kidding about the not liking them part. Um, those things can be offloaded to the AI and the intern can then just check it. So instead of giving an intern a task that's going to take them a full week to do, because it's just, okay, take this website, take the spreadsheet, please rewrite all of the title tags. The AI is going to be able to help with that and do it in seconds. And then the intern just needs to go through and check for quality control again. So working this into our, our workflow is going to make tons of things easier. SEO compliance and enforcement is another thing this is going to make a lot easier. Have you ever heard of mental load? Sometimes it's called like worry work or cognitive labor. The mental load is not about tasks themselves, but rather like the, the effort required to keep everything in your head and oversee the tasks, getting them done, ensuring they're done on time, making sure they're done correctly. One of the things that we like to focus on at Yoast is baking SEO into the cake as much as possible. You know, the technical, the on-page, anything we can do to lessen the burden on the content producers, the writers, the journalists, the SEOs, anyone who's producing content or optimizing content, 
we want to try to take and enlighten their mental load. So this is why we're adding in AI enhancements to enforce good SEO standards rather than always having to go back after a writing task has been completed, this extra step in your workflow to ensure that the title tags are long enough or the title tags aren't too long. The meta descriptions are within the correct character, character length. They've got the right KPIs in them. Um, I'm sorry, keyword phrases. All those little things that you would normally have to have one or two extra steps in your workflow can be either shortened or mitigated or improved upon by having the AI double check at the point of entry, um, make suggestions at the point of creation and suggest things that are already in compliance with those SEO requirements. So anything that has a definable set of rules, we can fix it so that the user input always complies with those SEO requirements. Finally, we're gonna talk about creativity boosting. Circling back to productivity, but from a creative perspective, the AI functionality that we're adding into Yoast SEO is going to spur your creative side by doing things like recommending ideas for new content or a continuation of a story based on the things that you've already been writing about. Let's say I've been writing about jujubes and I've covered all the different flavors, but I'm struggling to come up with what I should write about next. AI is going to let me click a button and based on the body of work I already have, the AI helper might recommend writing a story about the history of jujubes or a list of pop culture references or famous people who are known to have loved jujubes or why jujubes is just such a fun word to say. Again, I assume this is a laugh line. So let's say for a specific individual story, our workflow will include um, a pre-pub, okay, can't talk, pre-publish review, say that 10 times fast, especially for like newsy sites. The AI can make sure that the angle of your article is appealing to your audience. So let's say you're in a space where local SEO is important. You already know that making content specific and appealing to your locality is important not only to your reader, but for SEO purposes. So having this review step added into your workflow, but not in an onerous way, is going to improve your results and save you time. And finally, this is a huge benefit for me personally, um, going back to my, my little struggle with, with uh, neurodiversity. I frequently need someone else to talk to while I'm thinking things through. And I know that that seems like um, something the robot wouldn't be able to do, but you'd be surprised. Interacting with and having something respond to you, even though it's a computer and you know it's you know it's a bot, is still helpful. It, it helps me brainstorm, it helps me bounce ideas around. I can I cannot burden other people or other coworkers by dragging them into the room. Like, I need you to sit here and talk to me while I figure this out. It's kind of an imposition. The bot can do that for me. And so having something where you can type in this is my keyword phrase. This is, you know, the audience. This is, you know, this is the goal. Can you help me think of something? And the chatbot will be like, yeah, I can help you. And it just blurps up a bunch of ideas. And if the ideas aren't quite right, I can say, nah, that's not really what I was thinking about. Can you refine that for me? And it will. And it won't get mad. And I haven't interrupted its nap and everyone is happy. So, it, you know, I'm all of the things that we're working on right now to make life easier and better. I just, I'm so excited for it because I know that it's going to help me be a more creative, more productive SEO um, contributor, team member. It's just very exciting. I think, you know, the SE. Right. You know, let's lean into it. Let's lean into it as a tool because it's not going to steal our jobs. Um, it's going to be a huge help for those of us that need the help. And according to studies, there are millions of people that may or may not realize that this is going to make their lives better. It's going to increase our productivity and the compliance and just not having to yell at people and constantly go back and say, hey, I told you 
your descriptions are supposed to be this long. I need you to do X, Y, and Z and make sure that you're doing this for SEO purposes. Um, quick story, I, I came from, I spent 10 years in, in newsrooms and I dealt with a lot of journalists. The journalists do not like to be told that they need to change their writing for a machine. That is, they're not cool with that. Having something in the, the software that automatically suggests politely without it coming from another human that would be interpreted as a, a, interpreted as a criticism is going to make things a lot better. It's going to be easier. There's going to be less offense taken. I mean, it, it's going to be nice. Um, so it's going to increase the, the productivity and the compliance. And then hopefully, you know, as we go on, Skynet's not going to become self-aware and destroy humanity, but you never know. So let's all enjoy our jobs while we have them, shall we? That's my talk. Go. Awesome. Oh, okay. Oh. No, I had one more slide. I, uh, you bow. So did you? Oh, that's that's. Did you generate that using uh, using any of the AI tools? No, I. You know what? I have to tell you that I did, in fact, not. Um, do you want me to stop sharing? Uh, no, you're good. This is a beautiful oh. slide. I'm. Uh, uh, I mean, no, if I you stop sharing, we're just going to become bigger for everybody. <laughs> um. So the we have, like I said, I've only been at Yoast for like six weeks now, and I am notorious for having really awfully ugly slides because I would make them myself. And we have a team that makes slides here, and they did all of this for me. And this is, honest to God, the most beautiful slide deck I have ever presented. So I'm. Super, super. Uh, well, kudos, kudos to your design team. I know that this transformed like all of our presentations when uh, our design team started to made, and it's been recent as well for us. Thank you so much for this uh, fascinating talk. We've got about five minutes for questions, and uh, I'm gonna start with the Q and A session with the uh, most upvoted ones. So, what AI tools would you recommend for content creators and marketing teams? Um. Well, I like Yoast. Um, <laughs> uh, there are so many new tools coming out on the market. It's really kind of difficult to keep up with things. I do have a um, the paid subscription to ChatGPT. Um, I know other people are testing with different um, different learning models. I boy, I would be hard pressed to tell you exactly which ones to use. So I do like Yoast, obviously, because I'm working on it and I can have, you know, input on what we change and what we add. Um, just a direct connection into chat GPT, I think is helpful. There's AI PRM, I think I spelled it right, uh, builds prompts for you and, and has a, a library of prompts. They're not, uh. all, they're not all perfect, but if you are not good at writing prompts, this can be a, a stepping stone. Um, until until you can refine them and learn better. Um, so yeah, I, it, it, they're all so new. It's really hard for me to say anything stands out as being super awesome. I wish I had better news for you. <laughs> uh, that's all right. Um, anything that you would like to share is definitely going to be valuable. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question. Um, can you optimize to show up in chat GPT Will Google and Bing be replaced with <laughs> AI tools such as ChatGPT? Or will Google and Bing continue to use AI itself and change the way it displays results? So you cannot optimize right now to show up in ChatGPT, especially because the data set that it is using is from September of 2021. So anything that happened after September 2021, it doesn't know about. Um, and like, recently, because again, I have a problem writing about myself. I said, can you write me a bio suitable for sharing on social media um, that includes my, you know, that's suitable for work. And then I told it where I work and it came back with, we have no record of Carolyn Shelby being associated with Yoast. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> I just told you I am, but it wouldn't do it because it didn't, it wasn't aware of that. So um, right. until they get better, or faster about incorporating new new information, I would say yeah. that optimizing yourself to be in chat GPT is kind of not a thing. Will Google okay. and Bing be replaced with AI tools? I mean, they already, 
they're already doing so much to discern your intent. The only thing that would be you know, replaced really would be, um, well, ChatGP could never replace Google without piggybacking on Google because there's right. so much underlying it that they can't, they can't mimic that, you know, just mm -hmm. their little scan because they're regurgitating what they've already learned. And right. Google is just that index that it would be pulling from. So can it can it fully replace it? No, it could use it maybe. And it might change the way that like the Google search generative experience, the, you know, the SGE, that might change the way the search results are presented to you, but it's not changing the underlying search functionality. So yeah. Okay. Uh, there are a couple of like not actually quite a lot more questions as I promised you in the beginning. People do seem to be very interested in the topic. If you're interested, you can answer those in the chat or all in here in this current session. We, however, are out of time. Uh, so I would have to thank you for your wonderful presentation and for being here with us. Aaron Shelby from Yoss, thank you so much and uh, see you soon. Thank you guys. Bye.